Hey, I'm Tyson. Today, let's make a croconole board. Croconole originated in Canada. Canadian? What? Turn this off immediately! Turn... Um... <laughs> the base was a nice use of some plywood offcuts that I cut down to 6 inch widths and then cut at 22 and a half degrees at the miter saw. The long edge of these pieces was 12 and 3 quarter inches. So after the first cut, I could set up an angled stop block and the rest were easy by making the first cut and then flipping the board for the next cut. A quick test of the angles and we need some joinery. I used dominoes to join these together, but you could easily use biscuits or even simply glue them together without any reinforcement. Once we glue the top on, that is a ton of glue surface that will be holding everything together, so it's not going anywhere. That said, if you do use some sort of joinery, make sure to label your pieces in a way that you can reassemble them. <laughs> not that I know that from my own mistakes of gluing up the wrong pieces together. Uh, okay, moving on. Obviously optional, but if you have access to a laser cutter, then etching in a pattern on each of these pieces is a fun way to spice up your board. I glued this up in twos. and then halves first. It was very likely that there would be some error in the angles. Even a tiny amount of error multiplied across 16 cuts left me with a gap of about a millimeter. So I took one of these halves to the miter saw and shaved off just the smallest amount then over a series of test fitting and shaving off just a fraction, I had a good final fit. Setting the base aside, an official crokinole playing surface has a diameter of 26 inches. So using half inch ply, I made sure I was a bit over 13 inches from two sides, drilled a hole in the center and just used the drill bit and a simple guide to draw the circumference. This was just helpful to cut out and free the circular playing surface and set aside the larger sheet of ply. The center hole is one and three eighths inch in diameter. So using a, a small pilot hole I had drilled before, I could start the hole with the right size Forzner bit, but only drill just about halfway through. But for now, we'll widen that pilot hole to accept a one quarter inch dowel, and this will serve as our jig for cutting all the circles from now on. Using a scrap board, I could measure out 13 inches and then screw down a router base to cut out a perfect circle. After a bit of sanding, I used a dark gel stain on the entire top surface. 
To help glue the base and playing surface together, I used a few longer boards to act as clamping calls and then let this sit overnight. Now we get to cut in the game board lines. You can simply draw these on with a permanent marker, but I chose to route in small grooves. A V-bit or small straight bit works for this. I used this 1 16th bit set for very small depth of cut. We need to cut circles with a 12 inch radius an 8 inch radius and a 4 inch radius Now we need to cut straight markings between the 8 and 12 inch lines that divide the surface into quarters. Clamping down a board to act as a straight edge, I very carefully cut these lines, keeping constant pressure against the board. These cuts were pretty nerve wracking, so clamping another board to hold your router in place and prevent it from slipping off the line? Not a bad option. Crokinole has eight bumpers surrounding the center, and these can be thin bolts or screws encased in rubber, but I just use dowels. Drawing up and printing out a quick reference guide, I aligned it with my existing markings, drilled pilot holes, and then drilled for a 3 8 inch dowel. This works really well for removing the dowels when not playing, or removing some of the dowels, which my kids like to do when they're playing. With all the circles and bumpers finished, the center could be finished with the Forzner bit and another small circle of half inch or quarter inch ply is cut out and glued underneath the center. The trim was cut from a few sticks of walnut flooring. I cut a small rabbit into my boards, but that's optional. You could just use a thin board glued straight to the side of your base. To cut these, I just worked my way around the board, cutting one angle, lining it up on the board and marking the next angle cut. And then rinse and repeat. These were all secured with some glue and a few pins to hold it while the glue dries. Overall, this resulted in fairly clean corners, but as expected there were a few small gaps so a bit of the walnut sawdust and some glue could fill those easily. The whole board was given a few coats of polyurethane with light sanding between coats and a final coat of wax made for a very nice surface. Now, about the discs. I'll show you how I made discs, but really, crokinole discs are pretty cheap to buy and would save you a lot of trouble. <laughs> 
I think the board may be worth building, but the discs, eh, not so much. So, with that disclaimer, the discs are one and a quarter inch in diameter, so I got a hole saw at that size. I had previously glued up a board to make for some interesting striped discs and used another length of hickory for lighter discs. By far the better way to cut these out is to drill almost through the entire board, then run your board through the bandsaw or table saw to cut free all the cylinders. I forgot to plan ahead and had already cut my sticks down to final width, so I was stuck drilling all these out halfway through from each side. With several dozen jagged edged discs to help clean these up in mass, I loaded them onto one quarter inch bolts, tightened them down and spun them on my drill press so I could file and sand multiple discs at once. And this seemed to work pretty well. Putting a rounded corner on these proved to be more difficult or at least more time intensive. To safely spin these at my router table, I cut an angle in some scrap ply for them to register against and set it up at a depth to cut a shallow chamfer. Then I could use a bolt through the center to guide the disc and a rough file to spin it against the router bit. As long as I was being very careful to hold the bolt vertical, there was no chance of running it into the router bit, so I felt fine in this setup, but that said, this was cumbersome and took a lot of time, so another plug for just buying the discs. I am glad this works though, as I might try something similar on future projects. The discs were given a light sanding, thrown in a bag with polyurethane, then wiped off and left to dry and finally waxed. The board plays great. Wanting to expand the games we could play on this board, I also cut out two crossing barriers that attach to the board using the existing bumpers. Being an experiment, I created slots for the discs to pass through, and these were cut out on the table saw and scroll saw or band saw. This allows you to set up one partition for two players or set up both partitions for four player options. We've created a few game modes, but one that has been fun is to play in teams and try to land discs in your opponent's quadrant. We play with 10 or 12 discs each and go around in turns trying to remove discs from your area and land discs on either side. Thanks for watching.